Let's, let's finish with relating um, shamatha to, to Dzogchen. Oh, yeah. So I got, I've got like two parts to the question. Yep. And so in the Maha, maybe Maha Mudra as well, in the Maha Mudra Dzogchen tradition, shamatha is like described as, uh, for, in two ways, like thoughts being pacified into their own base, mm -hmm. along with a, a, a mind that's stable in bliss clarity and non-conceptuality. Yep. Okay. So I, my first part of the question is, do you think that's the same? as the shamatha with pliancy that we talked about earlier. And, and, and so is that necessary for Mahamudra and Dzogchen practice? Second part of the question is, um, so bliss clarity and non-conceptuality, those states, uh, and, and making a distinction between um, the base and mind, or rigpa and, and mm -hmm. salmon rigpa, mm -hmm. um, how do we do that? And, and so what I'm basically asking you, for you to talk about is the relationship between shamatha and pointing out or direct introduction. Oh, oh. and you would like me to do this in how many minutes? <laughs> okay, we can do whatever, however you want. No, it's that. wonderful. It's a very, it's a very rich and important question. In, oh, okay. Maybe Alan can repeat. In question. brief, simply, what's the relationship between shamatha and the practice of Dzogchen, achieving shamatha and identifying pristine awareness? That's the that's a shortened version of the question. And it's a very good question, and I want, I'd like to bring some nuance because it's very easy to be hard-assed. Mm -hmm. And I don't mind doing that on occasion, but I don't like it as my basic modus operandi. And that is, I've trained a number of, number of Dzogchen masters, all of whom I respect, because I won't train under them unless I have deep grounds for respect. One of them, and I'll leave him anonymous, but he's a very, very qualified teacher. Spent nine years in retreat. He's eminent. He's knowledgeable. I received teachings from him. They were fantastic. I even served as a interpreter for a short time. And I asked him, uh, as he laid out the whole path, I translated one of his root texts on the whole path, and Shamatha wasn't there. And I asked him, uh, here's your whole path, starting with the preliminaries, going all the way through Tekchu and Tukgel, the culminating phases of Dzogchen, and where's Shamatha? He said, oh, we, d we, we don't practice Shamatha as a separate practice. Okay, now I'm not going to write him off. He's too good, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I go back to the teachings I received, and my primary Dzogchen Lama is the Venerable Domam Gyatru mm -hmm. And I started training with him in 1990. For about seven years, I was primary interpreter, translated multiple, a number of texts under his guidance. And every text that he taught me over these seven years that I was very close living, I lived with him for two years, um, every text laid out the path, whether it's Natural Liberation, published by Wisdom, yeah. lays out the preliminaries, and then Shamatha. Multiple methods culminating in shamatha without a sign. Then vipassana, and then the rest of the path. Rim yoga, tektu, turkyal, and so forth. He taught me spacious path of freedom, the union of the Kagyu and Nyingma traditions, the Mahamudra and Dzogchen. Preliminaries, shamatha, vipassana. And then you go into Mahamudra and onto the path and includes turkyal from mm -hmm. the Dzogchen tradition. And then he taught me vajra essence. Very brief reference to the preliminaries, mm -hmm. and then really unpacks Shamatha, mm -hmm. which we have the book Stilling the Mind, published by, thank you, Wisdom Publications, <laughs> and then Vipassana, and then the rest of the path, including stage of generation completion. Uh, and there were shorter texts, one by Dujum Rinpoche, Shamatha and Vipassana in the Dzogchen tradition, mm -hmm. uh, and so forth. And so, and then all of the five works of the five revealed teachings of Dzogchen by Dujum Rinpoche, mostly out of four out of five explicit, Shamatha is there. In Buddha Without Meditation, it's there implicitly, but there are so many who covered that, because mm -hmm. this is all about Vipassana and, te and Tekchit, just yeah. those two phases. Yeah. And so where I want to be very relaxed and open to possibility, because mm -hmm. it's, it's this one Lama, and we keep him anonymous, but I can say his name, and he's a very fine Lama, yeah. for which I have no criticism at all. But is it possible, if you're very gifted, and you've done the preliminaries in spades, really purified your mind, cultivated the four measurables, which is part of the preliminaries in his tradition, mm -hmm really develop deep loving kindness and so forth. And then you receive pointing out instructions with a mind that is very well cultivated, mm -hmm. like a field that is mulched, fertilized, tilled, uh, tilled, you know, and so forth. It's really ready to be sown. Rich. And this qualified Lama gives you pointing out instructions, right? And let's <coughs> imagine that with this very well cultivated mind in pristine ethics and beautiful motivation, mm -hmm. bodhicitta and so forth, and you receive pointing out instructions. And you actually, the door opens, there's a, a breaking through conditioned mind to the unconditioned, pristine awareness, primordial consciousness, and you gain a genuine taste, not something conceived of a genuine taste. Is it possible in principle that having cultivated your mind very well and very, very deep guru yoga, mm -hmm. yoga that is really the, yeah. the deal maker here, mm -hmm. very deep guru yoga, 
and probably some stage regeneration and maybe completion practice also, because he teaches that a lot, mm -hmm. including you know, the Salum practice and so forth. That really gets your whole energy system really tuned well. Imagine you've done all of that, but no shamatha. Mm -hmm. But you actually have really done the Salum practices, which incredibly tuned your whole, your whole prana system. Mm -hmm. You gain a genuine glimpse of rikpa. Is it possible that you might slip into that and achieve shamatha and vipassana within the context of dwelling in rikpa? If you're very gifted, yeah. There are people, you know, there are Mozarts, there are Einsteins, there are Gausses, there are people just inconceivably gifted in a wide variety of areas. You know, Magnus, I just was watching documentary on Magnus Carlson, genius of chess. I mean, he was absolutely brilliant, almost, almost inconceivably brilliant. But he was started, he showed his brilliance when he was a kid, the youngest grandmaster in history. And so I'm not one of those people in anything, but there are such people. And not only for chess, mathematics, and science, and music, and art, and so forth, but also in Dharma. And I'm not going to count them out. So could that be mm -hmm. that they may never need to practice Shamadha Vipassana separately? Because mm -hmm. if you're dwelling in Rikpa, you're viewing reality from the perspective of Rikpa, which means you are seeing all phenomena as empty of inherent nature, not existing from the own side. If you're reifying, then you're not viewing reality from Rikpa. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing, from that vantage point, you're, you're seeing emptiness. The emptiness of inherent nature of every phenomenon you experience, subjectively and objectively, and the very duality of subject object is also melted away. And so you're realizing emptiness, you're resting in rikpa, self-knowing rikpa. Might you achieve shamatha, stabilize there, and become a vidyadhara without any separate practice of shamatha vipassana? Possible in principle. I think not for the likes of me. This would be like me, 66-year-old, saying, okay, there's Everest. Who needs climbing gear and oxygen? Just go for it. <laughs> well, I'm going to die before I'm one quarter up the mountain. It's not for me. But there are people who've done that, right? Who climbed to the top of Everest with no oxygen. Not me. But there are such individuals. And so similarly, in, when we go back to the, the, to the Sutrayana, mm -hmm. whether Theravada or whether Mahayana, are there people who are so gifted that they may not, not do any separate practice of shamatha at all. Go directly for vipassana, mm -hmm. whether it's authentic vipassana practice, like as taught in the Satipatthana Sutta by the Buddha, or is vipassana as taught in the Indian tradition, the Mahayana tradition, or the Tibetan tradition. Is it possible that they, with, again, wonderful preparation, motivation, bodhicitta, all of that, and go directly to vipassana without any separate practice of shamatha, gain some realization of emptiness, of shunyata, mm -hmm ascertain that and then have emptiness as their object of shamatha and simultaneously achieve shamatha and vipassana together without any separate practice. I think this does happen and I think one tradition that does that at its best is Zen. Because shamatha is very de-emphasized, if mentioned at all in Zen, does this mean it's a flaky, incomplete practice or tradition? I don't believe that. There are too many great masters, Dogen and others. Mm -hmm. So even if they don't practice shamatha separately, and in the Chan tradition as well, they may or may not. Chan, shamatha is found in the Chan, not so much in Zen, hardly at all. But if you're very gifted, just practicing Soto or Rinzai may give you the realization of emptiness, maybe even realization of Buddha nature, if that's, that, mm. that's their call. You may achieve shamatha with that as your object. And so this makes it very pliant. But for ordinary people, people of dull faculties, and I, I'm the first to raise, I, I got my hand up first. <laughs> I am a person of dull faculties. I am the slowpoke. I am the tortoise. Uh, and I'm not being humble. I mean, you might think I am, but you're wrong. I'm just trying to be honest, because that's kind of like what I try to do as much as I can. Uh, but there are ordinary people like myself who are not exceptionally gifted at all. Mm -hmm. Not for meditation. Just a slowpoke. But I'm really tenacious. You know, like that tortoise that just <laughs> never gives up. You know, going chug, 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 you know. That's me. And for the likes of me, having a path. The preliminaries, cultivating the mind, practicing shamatha, achieving shamatha, practicing vipassana, achieving shamatha, vipassana, mm -hmm. the union of shamatha and vipassana, priming yourself so that whether you're reading a text or contemplating the Dzogchen view or receiving point out instructions mm -hmm. from an accomplished master, you cut through, you cut through conditioned mind, mm -hmm. you shatter it, and you drop into a timeless awareness that's mm -hmm. beyond the three times of past, present, and future unconditioned, unborn, unceasing. Mm -hmm. And then, with that preparation, shamatha, with its stability and clarity, gives you the muscle power 
to sustain that ongoing flow of awareness, of pristine awareness, the mm. self-knowing pristine awareness, and your realization of emptiness prior to mm -hmm. Tekchu prevents you from falling to another pitfall, and that is back into reification, where you're reifying objects, subjects, your mind, awareness yeah, itself. Awareness. It protects you. So the shamatha and vipassana are the two massive bodyguards mm -hmm. to protect you when you break through to pristine awareness to enable you to sustain that. Mm -hmm. And when you're resting in that, aware, in that practice, then all the great Dzogchen masters that I've read tell with one voice, once you're resting in Rikpa, now you have only one practice. Rest in Rikpa <laughs> and deactivate your body, speech, and mind of a sentient being. Deactivate that, because as soon as you activate it, you're operating from the platform, ah, shucks, I'm just a sentient being, but I hope to become a Buddha one day. When you're resting in Rikpa, you're resting in Dharmakaya. So there's nothing to achieve. But just let the blessings of Dharmakaya flow up and embrace you. And so there's nothing to be done, and that is the gist of Buddhahood without meditation. Meditation here means you're doing something to achieve that which you have not yet achieved. When you're resting in Rikpa, there is nothing to achieve, because you've tapped into a primordial ground that was already there, as the ground, the path, and fruition. It's timeless. It's simultaneously ground, path, and fruition. And you're already home, so just stay there until it fully manifests in all the qualities of perfect enlightenment. Are yours. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Can you believe that was the appetizer? <laughs> <laughs> You've stolen my thunder. Now what do I say?